Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I have a video that's a little bit different than what I've done in the past. It's not an educational and it's not a wig review. I'm going to answer some questions that many new wig wearers may have. On the Wig Studio One private Facebook group, Wig Studio One Wig and Topper Support Group, we have a member that also writes the blogs for the Wig Studio One website. Her name is Vicki Lynn, and Vicki posted a question the other, just a few weeks ago, because she was putting together a blog, and I'll leave the link to the blog down below for you. She asked, what would you have liked to have known when you started wearing wigs? Well, we have over 16,000 members in our private group and many questions came about. Many, many members said, well, this is what I would have liked to know. This is what I would have liked to know. So what I did, I went into Vicki's blog. I just chose 10 of what I thought that you might want to, I, well, I think you might want to know them all, but I just, chose 10 so this video wouldn't be that long as i mentioned i will leave vicky's blog uh, down below in the description box just hit the show more and it will expand and the link to vicky's blog will be on there i did ask vicky for permission in order to do this video and i hope you enjoy it so this is the um uh, some of the things that the ladies thought that they wish that they had known when they started wearing wigs. And the first one is wigs don't look like the stock photos. No, they really don't look like the stock photos. Uh, many times there are the, for the, for the stock photos, those wigs are styled by professional stylists. I am not here to say if this is right or wrong. I'm just letting you know how it is. And then we have some other manufacturers that their pictures are just horrid they're they really are i mean i don't have any nice way of putting it i have gotten and i don't want to mention the brand but i have gotten purchase wigs from this particular brand the wigs on the the stock photos are not pretty at all and yet you get the wigs and they are absolutely gorgeous so what do you do you see us you see something that you like in the stock photos look for those reviews look at different reviewers and see what they how the wig looks on them and what they have to say about the wig the need for basics how to measure my head picking a cap and the differences between the different caps i think that that is really important measuring your head is very important i'm going to leave down below a link to John Renault's video, how to measure uh, for a wig. And it's a, a very simple two to three minute video. And it shows you exactly how to measure because if you have a shorter, a, a smaller circumference, maybe you purchase a wig that is an average and, it, and it's just too big on you. On the same token, if you have a very large circumference, and a large ear to ear, a large front and back, then something that is a wig that is average or even petite may not fit you. So I think that is really important, a very important point that I think new wig wearers would wanna know. I know that I didn't know about measuring my head when I first started wearing wigs. I was fortunate because I have an average all the way around. And you'll probably ask, well, once I have the measurements, now what do I do? You know, I, what I'll do is at the end of the video, I will leave, I will attach a chart that you can take a screenshot of and it'll show you the different measurements, what measurements go with what size. And I think that may help you. I think that's the only way I could do it. Uh, for the differences in picking out a cap and the different caps, I've got one of my videos that where I talked about the different caps. I think it's very important because if you have total hair loss, perhaps you're, you have a sensitive scalp. If you're going through chemo, you might have a sensitive scalp. So a hand tied cap will probably work better for you than a wefted cap. I have hair 
and therefore I can wear either one. It doesn't, it really doesn't bother me one way or another. But if you have a special circumstance, then maybe a cap is really something that you might want to look at. In the, my video that I'm going to leave down, listed down below for you, you'll be able to see the different caps and you'll be, and, and I'll explain to you what the differences are. Number three, how to train and style a synthetic wig to get a natural look. This comes up so often in our private Facebook group. How do I style it? What do I do? Is it just out of the box and then I plop it on and that's the way the wig is going to stay? No, absolutely not. You can use different styling tools. If it is a heat friendly fibers as such as the one that I'm wearing, this is Alpha Blend by Belle Tress in the color British Milk Tea. This is heat friendly fibers. If I wanted to curl it, I can curl it. If I wanted to use a flat iron, I could do that. I could steam, I could do a number of things. But if you have a traditional synthetic, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you cannot style it. Yes, you can style it in many different ways. If you need to train it off your face, that is something that comes up so often. You get a wig and it's right in your face and you're like, okay, what am I going to do with this? Well, you can steam it, whether it's traditional synthetic or it's a heat friendly fibers. You can certainly steam that off your face for a, that's a long term once you steam it, your wig is going to remain that way. If you don't want to steam, you're, you don't have a steamer, you could just use some uh, hairspray, some for synthetic wigs. I person, I have the John Renault here. I just ordered one from Hair You Wear. That is a temporary, you, you apply some, you spray some hairspray on it and it's going to stay for the day. Then the next time you wear it, you'll have to repeat the process. Number four, I wish I would have watched a lot of reviews and seen the wig on different people and how colors appear on various reviewers. I think that is very important as well. And here is the, the main thing. If you are a petite, if your face from hairline to chin is smaller, the wig may not look the same on you as it does on me. My face is almost eight inches from hairline to chin and I am big. So we want to, yeah, look, watch various reviews and then find a reviewer that has perhaps the same measurements and the same build as you. And that way you can gauge pretty much, well, how is this going to look on you? There are so many times I see I bought that wig and it doesn't look the same as so-and-so. Well, you may not have the same measurements. Or why does that wig look so much shorter on me? That's not the way it looked on you. Well, maybe your face is a little bit longer. Or my wig isn't as short as it, as it is on you or it's not as long. And it all has to do with our shapes, with our face length, with the, the width that we have in our faces. So that's why it's such a good thing to watch the various reviewers. And something that I've also have learned along the way, look at the skin tones because a color may not look the same on everybody. I have a medium tan skin tone with neutral olive undertones. So a color may appear lighter on me than on someone that has a very fair complexion with pink undertones. It's go, the color is not going to look the same. Case in point is British Milk Tea. It does not look the same on everybody. Plus, as reviewers, we have to use lights in order for the image to come through the camera. I do not have the possibility to sit in front of a, of a window for lighting. For example, today it is cloudy, it is rainy, if I were to record this vid in front of a window today, it's, it's early right now that I'm recording, but it is dark out. I wouldn't be able to record. I need my lights. Please keep that into consideration as well as devices. The device that you watch your, the video on may differ from one device to another. So those are just some little things that you might want to keep in mind. Number five. 
Don't decide if you hate a wig out of the box. No, it won't look great until you make it your own. Absolutely. Don't make that. You take a wig out of the box, put it on your head, and you think, I hate it. My suggestion always to the members, to the new members, the new wig wearers, is wear the wig for a few days. This is something that is different for you. It may feel like a helmet the first time you wear it. And it's not that it doesn't even look like a helmet, but to you it feels that way because it's something foreign, especially if you have thinning or no hair. It's going to feel like too much. Wear it for a few days. Stand in front of that bathroom mirror. Play with it. Put it tuck it behind your ears. Make a ponytail. Move the part over if it's a full monofilament top. Make it your own. You're not going to hurt the wig. But remember, you do that once you know that you are going to keep it because you don't want to, you want to make sure that you follow the return policy. Otherwise, it might become ineligible for return. So once you know you're going to keep it, and the way you know that is you take it out. Do you like the color? You put it on. You can put it on without disturbing the zigzag. Does the color look good? Do you like the length of it? Do you feel that, okay, this doesn't have permatease or it has enough permatease? I think I like it. I think I'll keep it. That's when you're going to play with it. That's when you're going to shake it and you're going to put it on. You're going to take away the zigzag part, stand in front of the mirror, wear it around the house, wear it to the mailbox, wear it to the grocery store, little trips to pick up your child at school or your grandchild at school. And little by little, you will get accustomed. And in a couple of weeks, you're going to say, wow, this is really pretty, but make it your own. How to, I wish I would have known how to get the Barbie hair shine out. All right, this is a question also that something that comes up so often. Barbie hair shine. Those are the wigs that look like they're fake. They You can tell that it is a wig a mile away and it is because of the shine. Some members ask, well, which is the brand that has the least amount of shine? Well, it's not a, a matter of the brand. It's a matter of the color and the shine is due to the silicone that is added to the fibers in order to protect them during shipping. That is not there permanently. It can be eliminated by washing, by wearing, by adding some dry shampoo. All of this will start eliminating the, that shine. The other thing is a wig that is made with heat friendly fibers, such as the one I'm wearing. This is basically, I've, all, I've only reviewed this color for Wig Studio One, but as you can see, there's no shine to it. And whatever shine you may see, it's because of the lights. Heat friendly fibers will not reflect that shine. The shine is also due to, this is plastic. It's going to reflect the light. Therefore, we want to add the dry shampoo, we want to wash, we want to uh, dip it in cold water, and that will help with the shine. I wish I would have known not to use a hairbrush or regular comb on a synthetic wig. You don't want to use a comb or a regular brush on synthetics. You can use, this brush that I have right here is by Rene of Paris. This has some metal bristles. When I receive a wig for the first time, if it is a straight wig, I usually will comb it through in order to separate the fibers with this metal comb. I always, always, always use a wide tooth comb on all of my wigs. Now, there is an exception to that. If you have a curly wig, the best tool for your very curly wigs are your fingers. That is the best thing. No comb, no brush. If you brush a synthetic fiber, you're going to end up with frizz. If you want to settle the curl some, it's better to give it a cold bath, hang it to dry, and the weight is going to bring those curls down. But you don't want to use a comb, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to get those to find curls back. I wish I would have been careful of the scams and buying from unknown retailers. Be careful. 
be careful with those Facebook ads. They use Taz's picture they from Taz's wig closet. They use Eileen's pictures from the crazy wig lady. They use, they steal their pictures. They steal portions of their, of their videos and they use it to create a scam. If you, if the price is too good to be true, it's probably a scam. When you see a Raquel Welch wig for $40 or $50, be aware. Also, many of us that review wigs, we review for certain com for certain retailers. I review only for Wig Studio One. If you see my face showing for company XYZ, please know that it's a scam. The same with Taz, the same with Eileen, any of the re any of the reviewers of for Wig Studio One, we only review for Wig Studio One. And there are other reviewers that are knowledgeable and they review for reputable wig retailers. Know your reviewers, know who they, they review for, and that way you know whom you can trust. But don't please be aware of those scams on Facebook especially. I wish I would have known about permatease. I wish I, I would have known why it's not so bad and why it's there. Not all wigs have permatease. Permatease is, think of it as the back teasing that might have been used back in the 70s or the 60s when we needed that a little bit of poof. Some wigs have more than others. Some companies use it more than others. It's necessary to hide the wefts, to give the wig the form, to give it the, the, the height. It's used for a number of reasons. And then there are companies such as Beltress. I prefer, my preference, my personal preference is no permatease. That's just me. There's nothing wrong with permatease. I just prefer a, a flatter, uh, less density wig. That's what I wear in my personal life. That's why the majority of my wigs are Beltress because this is my preference. Do I, I, re, I review different brands and different styles, but my purse, that's my personal preference. There's nothing wrong with permatease, nothing whatsoever. Sometimes we really do need, we have a style and it really needs that height or it, it's a basic cap and needs to hide the wefts. So it's something that it's a matter of preference. And how do you learn about it? By trying it out. You may try it out and say, wow, I really don't like this or I really love it. It's just a matter of preference. There is no right or wrong. And the last statement was, I wish I would have started with a style and color close to my own. When we start wearing wigs, we might see something that we really like, but it's foreign to us. It's nothing like we would have, like our hair. I would never have been able to wear my Alpha Blend in British Milk Tea three years ago when I started wearing wigs because this is so light. My hair was dark, a very dark brunette. It was a one or a two and or then I switched to purple, but the purple I switched to was very dark. Monica from Monica's Beauty and Lifestyle, she taught me that right off the bat. She said, find a color that is close to your own. And I started off with Chocolate Cherry from John Renault. And that was, that really worked for me. I also chose Scarlet, which was very wavy. And, and I was okay with that because I had worn my hair very wavy. Little by little, as time went on, I would give myself some time. I started out with Mocha with Cream from Belle Tress, and that was way light. I remember calling Monica and saying, I can't wear this. This is way, way too light. And now Mocha with Cream, you know, Mocha with Cream from Belle Tress is not a light color. It has a, a very dark root. It has caramel with just a little bit of blonde, but it's not, it's not a light color. Ease into it. Don't, if you are a brunette, my suggestion, don't get a blonde right off the bat. If you are used to wearing a pixie, don't get an alpha blend. 
If you are used to hair this length, perhaps a pixie is not the way to start. Ease into it. Ease into the different colors. Get used to wearing the wigs first. Get Find what you like, the brands that you like, the colors that you like. Get used to it first, and then you can start branching out and getting and then you get out of your comfort zone. I hope you've enjoyed this. Vicki, if you're watching, thank you so much for asking the question and thank you to all the members that sent in their, and that put in their what they wish they would have known when they started wearing wigs. Let me know if you have anything to add, something that you wish you would have known when you started wearing wigs. All right, everyone, thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.